Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson, we're going to focus in on how to define continuity at a very specific point. So last time we talked about an informal definition of continuity. If you remember, it was when I was just talking about how you can graph something and without ever lifting up your pencil, then it's continuous. But if you have to lift up your pencil and then keep drawing, then it's discontinuous. So now we're going to use some fancy math terms to help us be able to define continuity at a specific point. So the first thing is that has to meet three conditions. The first one has to be that f of c is defined. So f of c def being defined just means that c is somewhere in the domain, like it's not an open hole with nothing existing. c exists. Uh, then the next thing is that the limit has to exist. So you've got to be going to the same place from both sides. It's got to be headed to the same exact spot. And then the last thing is that the limit as x approaches c, this limit that exists, that we already said exists, it has to be the same as the defined point that we talked about up here in part number one. So all three of these things have to be uh, true in order for you to have continuity going on. So we're going to make sure you have this down, pause it if you don't have it all written down yet, so we can refer back to this as we go through the next couple practice problems. So what we're going to do on this first one is we're going to use some very clear uh, explanations of why this might or might not be continuous. So uh, x equals negative 1. So we're gonna, the piecewise function breaks at x equals negative 1. When it's less than negative 1, it's this. When it's greater than negative 1, it's this piece. So the way we do this is we're going to list the limits. We're going to list one-sided limits. So I want you to write down the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side. So I'm going to put a little minus symbol up there in the top. So we're doing of f of x. What does that equal? So if we approach negative 1 from the left, that is this piece right here. So we'll take the first piece and plug in a negative 1. So negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 1. And then that's going to equal 4 once we do all the arithmetic behind that. Okay, so that's the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side. Now let's check the right side. The limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of negative 1 of f of x is going to equal, and that's where we plug in the negative 1 into that second piece there, so negative 1 plus 2, and that's going to equal 1. So we can see these two pieces do not come together. This y value is a 4, this y value is a 1. So what we can do is say that it is not continuous because now we go back to our reasons. If you look up here, if any of these three things are not true, then it's not continuous. And what we just discovered is that the limit does not exist. The left and right side as x approaches c, or in this case as x approaches negative 1, they're not the same. So it's not continuous because the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of f of x does not equal the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side. Okay, and that is your answer. Now that might seem like a lot to write down and explain. Like, yeah, it's not continuous because the two pieces don't come together. Okay, that's how we would explain it in layman's terms and how we might explain it to somebody who doesn't know anything about calculus and this limit notation. But we want to get used to practicing what the limits mean and why it's not continuous using this definition of continuity. All right, so now part B. Let's see, is this continuous or not continuous? So we're going to use the 2 at x equals 2. So we're going to check right here at x equals 2. We'll plug it in to this piece right here. So we'll say that the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x, that has to equal 2 plus 2, which is 4. All right, now let's check the limit on the other side of 2, so the right side of 2, and then that's going to equal this other piece here. So it's going to be 2 raised to the second power, and that equals 4. Okay, so this is good news because the limit exists. So we, if we look back at our, at our options here, this one we have, the limit exists. But we have to make sure that it equals f of c. So we come back to this. What is f of c? In this case, we want to know what is f of 2. f of 2, since it has an equal to right here, that little equal to sign, greater than or equal to, that means we're going to plug it into that second piece, which equals 4. So all three of these things equal each other. It equals 4, equals 4, equals 4. So therefore, we have continuity. So the way we describe this is, I'm going to abbreviate now this time, continuous, I'll put a little continuous, continuous at x equals 2, yes, continuous, because, I'm going to abbreviate because, continuous because uh, f of 2 is equal to 4, so we're proving that it exists. Remember this? We're proving that f of c is defined. And what else? That the limit 
as x approaches 2 of f of x is equal to f of 2. Let me come back here and show you what I'm talking about. The limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to that f of c, or in this case, f of 2. So that part of it right here is the answer. It is continuous because of these two things. Uh, I should have actually probably put the word and in here. There, that looks a little bit better. Uh, now this, so what I've box here is your final answer with your justification. And then this is just the work that showed how I led to that justification. Okay, now let's jump into something that's a little bit easier. And that is, this is from our last, uh, our last lesson where we did holes that were removable and we did uh, vertical asymptotes that were not removable and they were non-removable. This one we're going to figure out, is it a jump or not? So do we have any type of jump discontinuity for this first one? So if we plug in a four for this first piece, we get three times four plus one. So 12 plus one, 13. So the first piece is going to equal 13. Now let's check this one. Uh, four divided by two minus one, two minus one is one. So these two pieces do not equal each other. Therefore, it is not continuous. And what type of discontinuity is it? It's jumping. It's going from a value of 13 and then jumps all the way down to a value of one. So we say a jump discontinuity, we'd say jump discontinuity at x equals four. At this x value of four, it jumps values from 13 all the way down to one. All right, how about this one? So let's plug in the one and see what we have going on here. If we plug it, or excuse me, negative one. If we plug in the negative one, we get something that looks like that. Simplify it out, we get one minus two minus one, and then simplify even more, you get a negative two, okay? So let's check this second piece here, the x minus one. So negative one minus one is a negative two. Okay, good, they equal each other. So the student who's a little bit rushing through this might immediately say, oh, it's continuous, there is no discontinuity. Except for, notice this says less than, and this says greater than, there's no equal to. When x equals negative two, we're up here at a value of five. So what you have going on here is you have some type of like parabola that's coming down. It's an open circle. And then x minus one has a slope of one. It's coming up like this. So this is what the graph is looking like, something like that with an open hole. And then the filled in dot is up above it at five. It's a filled in dot like this. So when you have the two y values that equal each other, that just means the limit exists. It doesn't mean it's continuous if it doesn't say equal to. So then we see that this is actually a hole at x equals negative one. So we have this hole there uh, because the, two, the limit exists, but the y value is not the same for the actual where it equals negative one. So you have to just check those to make sure. Now it might be continuous. If, we had, if that five had filled in the dot, then we knew it was just continuous and there's no discontinuity. On these last type of problems, we're trying to find out what value so we, there's an unknown value k right there. What number would this be in order for this function to be continuous? So for it to be continuous, that means the two pieces must equal each other. So I know that two minus x squared must equal the other piece of four x plus k. Now, when do those two pieces have to equal each other? When they come together at x equals negative two. So when the x value is negative two, they must equal each other. That just means you plug in a negative two. So you plug in the negative two squared, uh, then we get four times negative two. And then it's just a nice simple algebra problem that you have to solve from here. So two minus four, negative two equals negative eight plus k. And then you solve it and you get that k is equal to six. So if we say that the value of k is a six, if we plug a six in here, that would make it so that this function was a continuous function. They'd come together, okay? So that's the last thing you have to do on this, uh, on this practice set. Uh, rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson.